Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. Yeah! Yay! And there's only Finally. two of us. Yep. There's only two the of us two today. The two beautiful ones, though. The two beautiful ones, the important yeah. ones, so we can talk over each other today, and, and it won't be as annoying as it, as it normally is. Um, yeah, so Steve and, Steve and Sam can't make it. Unfortunately, they both have real-life work commitments and things to do, whereas me and Lou shun real life and would much prefer be on here and talk to nobody for 20 20 Damn hours right. it's much Damn more important right. much more important so hello to everybody in chat and thank you for watching obviously um today we've got quite a lot of gaming news to talk about i've been uh, monitoring twitter all week and uh, picking up the occasional article that comes up um we've also last weekend for any of the any of you that may have seen us we were streaming not for the full 48 hours or 72 hours, but we were streaming our LAN party that we were doing. Um, originally, we were going to be doing it for the Game Blast uh, charity, but unfortunately, we didn't register in time, so we decided to continue to uh, put things uh, to, to take donations for um, uh, for Child's Play. Uh, we got six pounds donated, which was awesome. Which is six the, whole pounds. the most we've ever had donated. Oh, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm, I appreciate every penny that people people give to us, and uh, the, the Twitch most we've ever donated. Yeah. You're not counting my 70 quid that I put in so far. Yeah. We've, <laughs> okay, that's okay. not a donation. Not, you can't count <laughs> that as a donation. We're, do, we're donating that to charity as part of the stream. Not many people do that, what we're doing for the for the Metal Gear Solid. But again, for those of you who haven't seen that, we, uh, we do a Metal Gear Solid... Um, well, we do general gameplay. Um, but at the moment, every time I die, Lou is donating a pound. Uh, we've played through Metal Gear Solid 1, 2 and 3. We're on the last... We've been, put it off for two weeks. We're on the last recording of uh, the last section of Metal Gear Solid 3. Um, in all, I think I've died 70-ish times? Uh, round about that, yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah. So 70-ish times, plus I duped two out of ten pounds, plus on top of that, I, uh, no, there isn't any of the bonuses, is there? Plus we've got the extra six pound that was donated from, uh, from you guys over the weekend, so yeah, not the best, but, but, you know, it's a charity, and the, the, the better appreciate it, or we'll keep the bloody money ourselves. <laughs> We won't, by the way. That was a joke. To, uh, <laughs> Lou was very, very, very. He's like, <gasps> we'll, we'll, we'll buy apples with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm also going to announce something else when we finish Metal Gear Solid Four. Um, I'm not going to go through Peace Walker. I don't think with you guys. Okay. I, I think it's it's as Steve got a bit ratty the other day about us. Uh, about me doing so much gameplay that he's and plus he's completely bored of Metal Gear Solid by now. But yeah. So yeah, this weekend we had this LAN party, so we played quite a few games, so we've got all those to talk about, um, and we'll we'll start with that. So uh, before we go through the LAN party, what, is there any of the games that you've had a chance to play? I haven't, no, no, everything I've played, i played in the LAN. No, but same here. we played here, a hell of a lot. We did play a hell of a lot, and to be fair, it was pretty much a Nidhogg LAN party, wasn't it? I was going to say, the game of, game of the LAN... It was. Has it was. To have been Nidhogg. We all brought. Um, we all brought our three. Well, I've got a brand new 360 controller, plug-in USB malarkey. Because I've always had. I've had a 360 controller forever, but if I did, I could never get it working on my PC because it was wireless and I didn't have the wireless adapter. Blah blah blah. But yeah, so I've, we all plugged into my PC and all played Nidhogg local local multiplayer, and it was the most fun I've had gaming for for ages i've been trying to pimp it to everybody that i speak to i've been saying look play it but play it local multiplayer play it with some friends get some mates around uh, a lot of people do it a lot of people do do that and it's it's brilliant it's I've, it's such a simple game such a simple concept it, but it's apparently, amazing I, I did some uh, research into like where it came from and it apparently been doing the rounds that demo um like the demo been doing the rounds at uh, game conferences and things like that for about four years mm, yeah it's they've been now. owning it and just like a lot loads of people were like i really want to own this game and you couldn't own the game and then eventually he released it um and what a fantastically beautifully polished focused would, experience it is i wouldn't say it's focused definitely and it's it's it, when we were playing it, we were talking about. Um, I, I, I will quickly explain to those who haven't played Nidhogg. It is a, it's a sword fighting game, and it's one of those like old school fighting games. But it's got a special mechanic in that you basically you have to push each other off the screen. You know, you have to push past each other and get to the next part of the screen. It's so fast paced though that it just it it induces squeals from you as you're doing things and you <laughs> you're getting. Uh, we've, we've, there's plenty of um, uh, video on demand stuff on our channel. Uh, so if you just check, click it, well, not now, obviously because we're streaming but if you click on uh, any of our video on demand stuff you'll be able to see the LAN party and pretty much if you just click through it you'll see us playing it quite a lot because 
and it's on the, it's on the screen. Well, I ran 30 minutes in on the first video. I, I actually showed it to someone at work, so you can watch that there and, and listen to the squeals of delight. Yeah, I was telling someone at work actually. Uh, a, a guy, the guy, a guy plays um, plays Destiny, FIFA. Madden, you know, he plays all of the typical console type games. But I told him if you've got mates that come round and you play games with them, get them on this because it's just so much fun. It is, yeah. There's so many little I... little cool mechanics in it as well that you don't really you don't really know about until you play it quite a bit. Yeah, I think that this is the thing about it is that's what I mean about it being focused. It's very, it's like someone's played it to death and watch it. The guy was watching other people playing it and adapting the game based on how people were playing it. So it's it's like this kind of feedback loop going on with the game. But apart from the fact that there's only four levels to fight in, it's it's as close to a perfect sort of um, local multiplayer game as you're going to get, really. It's, it's so much fun. I, I just smile just thinking about the <laughs> fact that, you know, you might stab someone in the face and then the next the next second you're falling down a, a cli- you know, you're falling down a hole or something because you've just timed the jump ever so slightly wrong. And there's, yeah. there's a, I think there's a lot of skill. There's also a lot of luck involved in it. And to me, it feels like what happens is you push it, unless it just, it's so well balanced that it's, it's like this, but you push someone all the way to the end of the level and then they push it all the way back to the other side of the level and then you keep doing that until the one of you just makes a mistake. Up, yeah. The tension ramp, so as, as they're getting closer, to this, especially as it pops up final screen, it's like, oh, the ch- all the chips are down now, I've yeah. got to kill your ass <laughs> but, before you get past me. But it, it, all it takes is one slight slip and that's it. They the, the, the run past you and... You, you worm food. Get a roll on, yeah. But yeah, um, Definitely the, the the game of the land for me. Um, we also played quite a bit of Tower Fall Ascension together. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we played uh, maybe two or three games of that. Um, it was, I think, after we'd come from playing Nidhog and moving on to that, it was a, it felt a little bit slow paced. Yeah, not only that, but the bizarre thing is, although the fact that Nidhog wasn't a very deep game, although the kind of me- the mechanics sort of do make it deep, there seems to be there, there seems to be less to do in Tower Fall. You um, get what I mean? Like see, it, it, we, it seemed more samey more quickly. It got s- repetitive very quickly. You said this before. I disagree. I think there was still lots for us to learn, and I think there was still lots going on. I mean, look at all the modifiers that we looked at when we looked in the options. There's so many little things going on in that game, but there's so much to pick up. You know, the, all the different um, types of arrows, all the different types of pickups, and again, the, the, those of you who haven't played it, it's a, it's a brawler, so you, you basically got some arrows. You start off with three, I think, um, and you jump around, kill in either mobs or or each other. I think I actually I preferred the the versus mode rather than the mobs. I mm. personally, but it's not for everyone. But yeah, I, I kind of like that. But again, that was on the same screen, all plugged into the same computer. Um, but it was a little bit less it's slower paced. But I still enjoyed it because there was certain tactics involved in it. And when you got into it, and when you started really understanding how the game worked it started to become fun again you know it was yeah. a little bit of a it was like that the learning curve on it uh, yeah it was even, like what the hell am i doing there's arrows flying everywhere and i'm dying and, and, and it, it's not fun as well because i played a fair amount of it in the single player it's different multiplayer for one and two not that much fun playing with people who haven't played it before and i sat there going what what just happened then you know <laughs> and plus there's also the, the you know the mechanic of the screen moving up and down and uh Different different power ups that get kicked off in the multiplayer that aren't in there's the single pu- there's player. There's probably a bit in the video where the screen starts to scroll up, and we're all like, "Whoa!" Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I did enjoy that when we played it. We probably should have played a little bit more than we did, but uh, I'm sure we can have plenty more lands. Uh, one other one that I know you guys didn't enjoy, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't really enjoy it multiplayer either. Was Battle Block Theater? I did not know what the hell was going on. I, I said the other week that I watched a. a a speedrun of this be- purely because of who was speedrunning it the, it was the guys who did um, who, who did Borderlands 2 which was an excellent speedrun but I watched it for an hour and a half and did not have a clue what was going on the entire time Yeah, and it was like a two and a half hour speedrun so I actually stopped watching it halfway through just because the game was so impregnable to me and when yeah. I played it it didn't get any better I was like it, my brain was thinking is this game really simple and it just it, it has a veneer of explosions and cats and <laughs> stuff like that you know is, is it pretending to be more complicated than it is or am i just not getting it i i think it is quite simple the game in general um i really enjoyed the single player aspect of it and i really enjoyed as i said to you before i really enjoyed the voiceover the multiplayer to me i'm not that keen on 
multiplayer games that it felt a little bit like it was shoehorned in to me. It felt a little bit like the single player was the focus and the multiplayer. There was too many modes and I didn't really see the point in half of them. You know, it's just, it's, there was a King of the Hill we played and you just have to basically stand on a point and stop people from throwing you off throwing you off this point i didn't really enjoy that i didn't let's be honest we got ganked by the computer we did players. get completely <laughs> destroyed by the computer yeah I, I don't know what setting the ai was on but we just got it was kick your ass it was hand your ass to you on a silver platter mode. yeah there was another one as well it was sabbath mode that's what it was what was the other mode with the, the first mode we played um I can't even remember. We only played two, didn't we? No, so it we... was Souls, Capture the Souls, wasn't it? You had to oh, kill each other and capture yeah. the Souls. That took about that took oh, about uh... all of the game for it to sink in what was going on, though, the whole the whole match. And by that point, the I think the I think the AI was on a hundred or something, and we were on fifteen or something ridiculous. I didn't really see what was going on. Half the time I didn't even know where my character was. I'd die and then I'd, my eyes would be scanning around the screen for this triangle headed fool. But I mean I think I, personally I bought I bought that not in a sale, I believe. I think I got that from Humble Store, and uh, I bought it for it was only a few quid, five maybe five quid at the most or something. But I I got it because of the single player, and I was quite enjoying that. And I'll, I will continue to play it, but didn't do much for me multiplayer. Didn't didn't enjoy mm. that much. It didn't appear. It didn't look like a game that would appeal to me at all, to be honest. And I think I was whether I took my preconceptions in with me or not i don't you know do, but though. i tend to i tend to do that yeah i yeah. tend to basically if i don't like the look of something i'm probably not going to like it you're, you're like I'm my wife my, my wife makes a preconception of something and she hates it if she if she hates it she's going to hate it you know regardless of of what anything what what happens what's in, wrong with that what, what is wrong with it's that it's close-minded that's what's <laughs> wrong with it. it it's i enter everything open mind it's like when i approach a new person or i i speak to a uh, go to see a new client or something i treat every individual as an individual you know everyone has a number of chances with me if you know what i mean if they're an asshole a certain number of times then they get treated like an asshole. It's the same with games, you know? And I'm still open to playing Battle Block Theater multiplayer again, but I didn't enjoy it the first time around. But whereas I played Nidhogg, sing single player, enjoyed it, played it for about 20 minutes and thought, oh, there's not really much more to it than this, is there? And there isn't much more to it than that, but playing with friends is where that shines. That's the difference yeah. between those yeah. two games. It's ostensibly a, a multiplayer game. I think with me, I think there's so many good, there's so many great games out there. There's so many average games out there that to to actually, I don't know, to waste your time trying to get into a game that might be average. Yeah, I know where you're coming I don't from. Know. You know, I, I've really loved some games. I, I didn't feel like the single player of, of Battle Block Theater is average. I thought it was quite a good fairly interesting and said well voiced decent kind of crazy ish but decent ish story bit of comedy mm. in there you know I, quite, I kind of enjoyed what i've seen of it so far oh excuse me fair enough so moving on next game we yeah. played was uh well not the next game we 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 played uh a number you'll see when if you watch any of the any of the land footage whenever we played this game we we kind of burst into laughter as soon as certain maps were loaded up um quake 2 our our staple <laughs> there's a there's a few maps that we uh we acquired from uh cranky steve's old haunted whole house haunted whole house that was it yeah. uh cranky steve was a uh uh, persona of the, uh, what's his guy the name? It's Rich Kianka Lotax. Ro so, Lotax, so that's it. Lotax from somethingawful.com, yeah. And um, it's a, again an old, I think it's still there, somethingawful.com, but it's not the same anymore, is it? It's, yeah, it's just a kind of general satire site, but the, the, it is archived, I think, the uh, Cranky Steve stuff. But Cranky Steve was this old, cantankerous old man who reviewed maps and basically just <laughs> destroyed them, you know, just laid into them. And they were the, the possibly the worst maps I've ever played in my life. There was two, it was three, no, two specifically. One was Eric 11 that we had lots of fun on, mainly because the spawn points for the map are set, well, they're kind of random. They're just randomly placed everywhere. But the, the spawn points for the map are quite often pointing out towards the, the lava. And you because you're playing quite you know quick furious games you're usually holding w you know holding forward <laughs> holding and you, forward you, you run straight into the lava as soon as you spawn and it's just one of those you know daft, daft o'clock in the morning fun fun times um and the other one is clyp or clip or whatever you want to call it clip which, we call it yeah which uh, is is possibly the worst best map i've ever played in my life it's so brilliant it's just it a looks, cylinder it, it, uh, sorry to use the term but it rapes your eyes it is horrific it to look at it's horrible it, it, especially at, again three o'clock in the morning hammering away at it um but 
the, the design of it is so competitive and so so interesting I mean there's there's two ramps that go up in di separate directions like that um, it's just one big kind of cylinder uh, arena two map two ramps that go up like that uh, and then at the top of the ramps there's there's various ammo and different weapons laying around right at the bottom of the map sorry there's a rocket launcher and at the top of the two ramps there's a, a single railgun and there's very few slugs for the railgun so the basically and then the top around the top of the entire map there's like a, a circle area that you just Bobby it's all open pledge. and there's just constant action going on yeah it's a really badly it's it's terribly terribly put together it, the level yeah but it but works it's, so it, well hey, it's brilliant fun it is great fun we it's, found uh, it we found it by accident i think it was we, we i don't even know how we found that no. one that wasn't a cranky steve one no no but it is it's utterly atrocious but thoroughly enjoyed it we also played one of my old maps um seabock onebsp which is my old grenade arena which uh, lou complimented me on actually when we were it was playing very it. nice map it was, yeah it was I, a nice map i remember that it's got leaks all over the place though bsp leaks i never i never <laughs> oh, i never it's... managed to figure that out so if you play it on an old old computer you know like the p2400s or whatever we used to have then it just wouldn't run very well so that's why the one reason we didn't play it much then but it was quite intricately designed i did quite a lot of uh, it was kind of a big area big corridor and you couldn't see the end of the corridor because it was that big as well on old computers but you can now which is the crazy thing for me from playing quake 2 um is that it is the most optimized and tweaked game ever i mean it is Quake 2 would be my number one game, I, I, I'd say. I'd, I'd Ooh, be you've, pretty you've comfortable. You've changed your tune there. I'd be pretty comfortable in saying that Quake 2 is in the top three, if not at the top. I think it, just in terms of the amount of time it's sucked out of my life. And, it was, and, it was and, my life for a long, long time. Yeah, it was Sadly my life. Sadly to admit that, but. But, but it, upon replaying it and seeing the. the, the the, the amount of config work that went into it and the pack files and tweaking the graphics and stuff it's amazing it's like no other game i've ever played has had that much time and effort devoted just to just to tweaking it it's like it was the closest i ever came to being a professional gamer yeah like, i i would consider myself like that i was we were we were the early kind of throws of, of prof you know, back then. professional yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i mean i i played a fair few competitions and you know we played in professional in division one commas. in the uh, in the U ukra2 ukra2 league yeah, we got yeah. to the division one and uh, mainly rocket arena too as soon as we tried to venture into ctf lithium or uh, deathmatch i know you played deathmatch with oblivion um, did, yeah. when you were quite you guys were actually very very good at that but you just didn't really push it i don't think um but yeah we, we, we played in quite a lot of yeah we we played in quite a lot of leagues and we were in division one two for most of them we never like won division one we we often won division two and three and all that other stuff but the interesting thing is that that it made me realize that there was something which separates pro gamers from people who are really good at games and that's the, the, the attitude that you have when you're playing the games. And I don't mean that in the sense of, you know, being a dick to people, but this, the difference between someone who's a sports person, like a professional sports person, and someone who is just very good at the sport is in how they handle themselves under pressure, how mm. to keep the cool. And I remember I used to duel people who were really good players, semi-professional players. People, like, I, I, um, I dueled Bloki, who had played against Thresh. Yeah, yeah and was definitely kind of professional grade material and i remember just shaking uncontrollably like the <laughs> adrenaline going through my body i could not play him and i think that was what ha happened with the clan as well when we were playing in in league matches when it was a you know a, a league final i don't think we did we never won the league did we we always lost well, which, in the final. which clan are you talking about oblivion or sqs, SQS. Uh, oblivion was different you guys there was a lot of people uh, pe people in in oblivion that were um I would say extremely good at what they did, but you never really took it to, you never took it to another level. You could have been one of the best DM clans in my eyes as an outside observer, because I was never part of that. I thought you guys were amazing at what you did. But, but the, when the it came to Rocket, is, go on. Yeah, the, dif the, the difference is that, that a lot of the players in Oblivion um, couldn't handle themselves under pressure, myself included. Right. So there were some really good players, but they were also some people who could not deal with the pressure of of a match which meant something i think the problem with uh, with sqs in my eyes i know we, we talk we're banging on about quake 2 a lot here but it is our staple game unfortunately um i think the problem was me with sqs is that back then i was a, a child 
and I didn't really know how to handle a group of men. If that makes <laughs> if, that, if that sounds worse than it comes to, but you, you know what I mean? I didn't know how to handle real people. I knew how to rage at people and use my teenage angst to, even though I was very mature for my age, I, I didn't really know how to how to handle like people saying sorry i can't turn up for practice sorry i can't you know i've got a real life it didn't make nothing there wasn't anything in my head to go well obviously quake 2 is the most important thing in the world what the fuck is wrong with you you know that that's what my brain used to do but now obviously it's different i've got a a, a life and i you know i understand there are other things that are more important um but in terms of clan games quite often it was one or two individuals that would let us down not in terms of their um not in terms of their ability to kind of lose themselves under pressure i don't think it was that i think it was more they didn't follow the plan quite a lot yeah. you know and rocket arena 2 was very, so a lot of it was very specific about where to go and how to handle it because there was only five of you and that was it you had one life that's a round over when when you've all dead which i think was brilliant it's a brilliant competitive game it's excellent it is yeah yeah it kept the pace up I mean, we played a little bit of that when we played Quake 2. We played a bit of DM, and then we went on to Rocket Arena 2 and just played in some of the old arenas. And the nostalgia that was flowing back to us while we were playing them, it was thoroughly enjoyable, thoroughly enjoyable. It's <laughs> just I, know, I, I just but love it. Also, when, when I, again, because compare it to, like, when, we pl when I'm playing Metal Gear Solid, uh, the nostalgia that I get from Metal Gear Solid is very, very different from Quake 2. When we played it at the last LAN party, uh, Quake 2, I, um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't fight you. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd lost. I'd lost all control of of the skills that I used to have because I changed my config since I used to play Quake Two. Now, I, I went back to it, and I don't know why. Somehow, it must have been the fact I hadn't had any heroin that day. So maybe I don't know. Um, uh, fact I'd, I just had really rubbish stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really weak. Um, I think it must have been. I, I, I got my got my flow back, and I could actually put up a challenge to you you know it wasn't but we were playing them all rocket arena too so maybe it was that because first yeah. when we did it before it was a little duel wasn't it so and you're you're kind of in your comfort zone you're, you you were back i'm sure you played quake 2 in that room didn't you no some... no no did no you not? no i mean i played it but no not not when we all right okay i, I thought I, it might have been a comfort factor the, that you were in your, your own surroundings as well i did move to i did move to blackpool when i when we started when we finished you know coming towards the end of the clan type thing i was but that was in another and, Two two houses ago. So, right. but anyway, let's move on from Quake Two. We we, we enjoyed yeah. it. Let's say we enjoyed the nostalgia. And oh, that was I just wanted wanted to make one more point that the difference between the nostalgia with Metal Gear Solid and the diff and Quake Two is that Quake Two is actually a very very good game even now to play it competitively. I think it could still stand up the, the test of time with any of the competitive games that are out there right now, as it stands. And I'm talking about. You know the latest Unreal Tournament, and so well, which we played as well, which we'll move which on to played, in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it'd be a good segue into that. UT four was it? We so it's an Unreal Tournament four. Yeah, basically, um, if anyone's not seen this, um, they've basically released the engine, they've released the tools to make the games, and they've put it out to the community to, to say, "Look, help us make the new Unreal Tournament. When you do, it'll be free to play." And it won't be free to play as in free to play. It will actually be free for anyone to, to download and play all the stuff that's in there. But I have a problem with that in that help us make Unreal Tournament. I don't have a problem with that because that's actually how Unreal Tournament became so popular, I think, through the mods, the maps. You know, they're, they're kind of, they're reaching oh. out to the community that a community that helped make games like Counter-Strike, for instance. You know, yeah. Counter-Strike, where would Counter-Strike be without the modern scene? Well, it wouldn't. It was a mod. It wouldn't. It was a mod, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, no, so they're by putting the that. engine out to people. I get that, but the the what are the, what, what is it? What's the, what do you mean? Are they asking the, the, the community to make the maps? Is that the they're basic? They're asking the community to, to, to basically collaborate with them. So they're going to run the project. They're going to oversee things. They're basically signing off the models and stuff like that. And their team are also working on it. So they're making maps for it. They're making all the rest of it. But they're saying the community will add to this as well. I mean, I bought Unreal Tournament 2004 and it came with something like 40 or 50 maps. Yeah. It was on like two DVDs or seven CDs. Yeah, yeah. It came with loads of content, and I think they did that partially because they released Unreal Tournament 2003 the year before, and it was quite disappointing. I thought even um, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, yeah. It was 2003, and then they released 2004, which kind of rectify and add loads of extra content to it, um, and it was excellent. So I think that was probably the peak. 
Um, Unreal Tournament 3, I didn't really enjoy that much, to be honest. I thought that was a bit of a tech demo for the I, I, Gears of War. I think it looked beautiful. Yeah, it but, does. Uh, yeah, I didn't play it that much, or enough to give it any kind of score, you know, or, or criticism. But now we're, on, now we're on Unreal Tournament 4, and my initial impressions are very positive. It is fast, it's smooth, it's very pretty, and they're focusing on the the kind of core mechanics how does it feel how does it move rather than unreal tournament 3 which was a case of let's make really beautiful maps and then throw a quick unreal tournament game into it yeah i did i did like the feeling of it i have to be honest with you i did i, I, I it wasn't my thing i have to be honest at the same time i like the feeling like the, the control system and uh, the weapons were familiar but i, I didn't i don't know there's, there's something about unreal that i've never really clicked with uh, it looks awesome it always has looked awesome and the single player i've always enjoyed but yeah. unreal was my original game unreal was a game that got me into first person shooters really apart from maybe doom on the playstation but it's certainly pc um i i skipped straight over quick too i bought it and played it a little bit and didn't like it and then got unreal tournament uh, not unreal tournament the original unreal which came with bots so mm. i could like i could play bots i didn't have an internet connection at the time i had a really shitty one i had a, like i was on aol <coughs> yeah. uh dial up and it was amazing and so that nostalgia that the fact that i feel really comfortable with the way that you're moving it and stuff and the way the weapons work and the, the weapons are really interesting in real tournament more than any other first person shooter i can think of the weapons are really cleverly designed and there's lots of ways you can use them and so i, I felt right at home playing that and i'm i'm really looking forward to seeing what the community does with it i'm i'm looking forward to it for you know um to to see what happens but yeah I'm, i probably won't play it myself i think i think i've had my uh my fill of of first person games twitch shooters are definitely making a comeback i think people are bored now of call of duty battlefield style games they're, they're getting there the course from the yeah. from the devs that i've um from the devs that i've spoken to yeah i'm i'm seeing that as well uh yeah so sorry i was just looking at uh, some something on twitch so yeah, let's. Uh, so we talk, talked about UT4. We also played a bit of Civ Five, which is obligatory at LAN parties now. Uh, our LAN parties, at least. I have still yet to finish a game in Civ Five. I, I, when we were playing it this time, I was like, "This is this is good," but we could be playing better games. You know, I don't get that. I, I could, I could happily sit and play Civ Five. It's very all relaxing. Day. It doesn't stress me out or, or require yeah. much cerebral. Um, you know, I don't. I don't. It's it's. It's not that I think it's a bad game or anything like that. I just think that I think that the time could have been spent better. We could have been playing something more, um, more cerebral. I, I like games that make me think and make me do more interesting things. And plus, I suppose the five limit, the five minute limit, was stressing me out a little bit in, in terms of right, I can't I can't do any micromanagement because I have to get things out quickly. And to be fair, it wasn't a five minute limit, it was a 20 second limit, wasn't it? Because every, time, time. every time someone said it was la lasting more than 20 seconds, one of us was going, you're done, you're done, you're done. <laughs> Click and turn. Yeah. But also, yeah, as we said, it crashed. So we played about five, five hours of it. Steve's PC it crashed. Crap, I think whatever we played yeah and steve's pc yeah. crashed and then that was it we just damn played it again probably won't till the next land no no <laughs> um one other game we played as well i think this was quite late on on saturday night was uh, um, space engineers yeah now i again i played the i got the open beat the it was it was free this weekend on steam and yeah. um yeah i uh, not the best builder game i've ever played in my life but I, I was a bit confused. I didn't. I didn't understand the scale of things. I didn't look at any tutorials, and I didn't. Everything felt like it was huge. You know, it felt like in space. I know, but I don't know. It just. I didn't understand the scale. I didn't understand how to do anything. I didn't. I didn't grasp it. But then again, I had the same problem with Fortress Craft when I went into that. I didn't get. It wasn't the scale thing that was a problem there. It's just that I didn't get how the mechanics sat together. The same went goes for me in Minecraft. I don't really get the. I don't get the let's build something out of nothing, you know? Yeah. I think with Minecraft and Fortnite, at least you got some exploration, whereas with, with Space Engineers, with Space space Engineers, Space Engineers, um, there really isn't much more to it than just making things. Yeah. And 
maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is an exploration element, but exploring space doesn't seem that interesting to you, me. Like you, basically, it's just asteroids. You know what the first thing I did? I don't know if you guys were paying any attention to me at all, but as soon as I got into you make the a game, giant penis. No, no. First thing I did was I looked at an asteroid and I just pressed W, and I went. I just flew all the way to the asteroid, got there, and then flew all the way back to where you guys were. So I spent the first. 35, 40 minutes of the game just flying around in space, not going left or right or anything, just forward and backwards and then when I, when I finally got to something, you guys had built spaceships and I was like alright, okay, right, so I can see kind of the scale-ish type thing there and there was some platform or something but I started building stuff and I didn't get the it was all upside down and, and my head was, wasn't getting it, it wasn't that, the, the, the six degrees of freedom was a big problem for me because I'm limited to the Cursor Island I've, I've got fewer keys than than a normal person. Um, Emphasis so on the I, normal, though. Yeah, I was I was struggling with that actually. Um, it, it felt a little bit clunky, I think, because yeah. of words. It, it it wasn't easy to build things, and I've seen some amazing stuff built with it. But it just for me, I, I think I agree with you. It was kind of not much to do and a bit awkward in the things that you can do. I also felt a little bit like it. I needed more to do in it rather than just build. You know, was there a name to it? I mean, I did ask you guys, and you did kind of. Tell I think me, we, were, I think we were playing the sandbox mode because we had access to all the stuff. But I think there is a survival mode or something like that. I can't, don't quote me on this, but I, I think there is a goal-oriented mode, to, which is to kind of mine for asteroids for materials to make items and stuff. Mm. Yeah, not for me. I don't think I'm going to buy that. It is on my wish list, but I'll probably remove it now. I've played it, and mm. yeah, it wasn't wasn't my thing. Uh, chivalry Modern Warfare, we had a bit of a game of. Just one Medieval or two. Warfare. Yeah. Modern Warfare. <laughs> I always call it that by accident, sorry. Yeah. Chivalry is great fun, and uh, I was really impressed with the way they've updated the engine. It looks very polished now. It used to look like a bit of a crappy Unreal mod, but now it's got a sheen to it, which feels like it's its own game. Still pl plays similar uh, to how it, it plays did. exactly the same. Well, yeah. no, I actually felt like the throwing was better. You know, the throwing of uh, axes. Right. Or either that or I've just got, I don't know, maybe a better con configuration or I've figured out something. I, I could hit people with the, the throwing axes, whereas before mm. I couldn't do that at all. It was just like, I didn't, again, maybe I just didn't get the trajectory or something. They've done something to it in my eyes. But right. I enjoyed that. But then it bugged out on us, didn't it? I think. Yes, it did, I think. Something yeah. Something happened anyway. But also, it's a game which allows you to bind a button to scream at people, which, you know, running running at someone screaming, waving a sword, is pretty good. Yeah. It's, it's gaming gold, really. Again, good with friends, good at a LAN party. Yeah. It's Actually, we played it at, uh, um, was it a LAN Ops a while back? And there was quite we a lot of people. played it a few, yeah. yeah and it, it, it's, it almost had that Nidhogg effect. I think it, Nidhogg actually is quite comparable in that it's that close quarters, anything could happen... Um, and the, the combat is really interesting. Yeah, sort of. I, I mean, you know what I mean. I'm, I like something with a little bit more, um, in you know, a little bit more stuff to do than just shoot, run around, and shoot people. And mm. that feels different. I always like melee characters whenever I play RPGs, anyway. And mm. the fact that there's a lot of stuff that's went into the melee uh, combat in that, you know, you can you, there's all kinds of different ways to attack with a single sword. It's not just a single attack button. And the fact that you can switch between different. Um, different, you know, you can, you can have smoke bombs as well now, which I don't yeah, think yeah. were in it before. No, no, no you, you had them before. Oh, I, the, oh, I didn't yeah, see them before. There's, there's different ways to attack people. You can block physically, so if someone's swinging from one side, you've got to block that side. <laughs> Doesn't stop people from uh, swinging behind you that are like stabbing you in the back while you're fighting someone else. And that's the there's, thing, the title says it all, doesn't it? Chivalry, medieval warfare. Should Chival be lack of chivalry, yeah, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, like a complete lack of respect for anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> warfare screw them yeah I mean, but that's that's also part of it as well isn't it you could just leave two people to have a fight and then fight someone else but you know that one the person who wins that fight is going to come and stab you in the back so you might as well one of, one of the maps is called bar brawl and it's it's got um, a mechanic where you can get drunk in it but there's also an arena downstairs and you don't have any weapons in it you just got your fists and it's hilarious because you'll have people like in the in the middle of the arena punching the shit out of each other then someone will just jump in like some bad wrestling program yeah. and start punching there'll be three people hitting each other in the ring and then everyone else will jump in and it's just like it is a proper brawl and it's really funny because you never know what's going to happen next yeah i'm a, i'm i'm a fan of it i do like it and i've seen a few people doing streams of it as well which uh 
which has been quite funny. But it's it's always better when you're playing it with friends in the same room, in my eyes. I, I think it would be an excellent game to play in, in a clan capacity, in, in a kind of organised team capacity. I think that would be great fun. I agree, because it's also there's also an element of learning as well and, and covering each other's backs, I imagine. Mm. Um and yeah, I think I think it would be. And I bet there are clans. There's got to be clans out there for it. it has yeah, to be. There will be. There's clans for everything, isn't it? These days, we started it. Yeah. Bloody kids. It was us two. We started it. Me and Lou. Bloody guilds. Yeah. There was no clans Backwards before clans. us. Do they still call them clans? It, it, like, oh, I don't know. Guilds. A lot of the time. Guilds is a, well, yeah role playing game. But do they still call them clans for Call of Duty? I imagine they do. Yeah, I think they do. I think they do. You always see clan tags all over the place. In Answers fact, on a, the card. a lot of games have clan tags uh, built into them uh, these mm. days as well. Which mm -hmm. I, I, I think uh, tribes did that. Um, yeah, I think the original tribes did that. And I was a little bit like, hey, why did you have to do that? Why can't you just... Just type something in your name? Yeah, just put it at the beginning of your name. It's, it's not... Like an animal. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't expect the fact that, you know... I, 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 anyway, right. Next game. <laughs> we played... Um, a bit of uh, Chaos Engine. Um, I, I gave you a very brief review on it. It was solid, wasn't it? And it uh, was. It was uh, pretty bland, to be honest. I mean, maybe I, I heard about this game back in the Amiga days, and I remember everyone going, "Oh, it's it's so amazing!" I've seen and played much better Amiga games. I think uh, it seemed very. Of course, there's better Sweet ones, but I think this is Steve, Steve said at the time. Um, it's it's very at the time it was fairly revolutionary in that it was one of the few top-down shooters that looked as good as it did, and it it has f fair few different elements. I mean, it did, to be fair, as I said, it, it, playing back playing back on it now, the nostalgia was great. You know, the nostalgia factor was greater than the actual enjoyment factor. I think. I kind of have a problem with that game because of this because it feels like they almost just did a quick port of it because they knew people would be thinking back to the nostalgia days and yeah. they buy it for the hell of it. I think they did. Yeah. And now, I, I, I know did. they do that with, with reboots and stuff like that, but this seemed especially lazy in that it was it, it looked like a substandard looking Amiga game. I think there are games on the Amiga which look absolutely beautiful and this wasn't one of them. I think the um, the main thing for me was the control system. It didn't feel solid at all. It didn't feel like it had... Uh, when I was going up, I was going up and left slightly, or when I was going up and right, I was going up or, or right. You know, it didn't feel like... Even though it did have an analog element to it, it still didn't feel right. And, and shooting enemies, I hate, I hate it so much when you can't aim at an enemy, you know? You're, mm. you're going up and down to... Uh, hard work for me but yeah I, I'm not that I'm not that in, in, I didn't enjoy it that much uh, even multiplayer I thought it'd be a bit better than doing it single player but I, again, I've only installed it now I've left it <laughs> uh, Rogue Legacy I we played we did a, did a bit of control pad swapping between us uh, we yeah. played it for a fair amount of time I know I know Lou's opinion on this but I love that game I am absolutely enamoured with it and think it's very well done and thoroughly enjoyable I I can see why people like it. I think there is there, there is a type of person who really likes Metroidvania style games, which is what this is. Stop now, calling we had a, it a Metroidvania. No, it is. It is a Metroidvania it's not, game. It's it, not. A yes, Metro it is. It absolutely is. It's a side-scrolling platformer where you've got uh, four di directions to travel, unearthing new rooms, and you can only get into certain rooms if you've got certain powers. That is Metroid and Castlevania. It absolutely is. Now we had this discussion at the LAN, people call it a roguelike or a roguelite and I hate that expression because a roguelike is, like technically a roguelike is an Ask I Art top-down turn-based adventure game. No, that's rogue. That is ro there, so a rogue. -like, a rogue like is something like Nehack, like, um, like Angband and things like that. I know about these games Whoa. and now... And now people are just banding the, the the phrase roguelike around like it is a genre and it's not it is a it is it is a hardcore mode that's what it is it's just i agree with you i agree with you to the extent right now we, we again we had this discussion and we came to a a compromise in that a roguelike in in my eyes or in modern eyes anyway at least is that um is is the type of game that is as you said it's 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 a mode of a game 
anything can be a roguelike. FTL is a roguelike because you it you once you die, you're dead. That is the basic premise of it. A roguelite yeah. is something that wait wait when you die, you're dead, but you can you know you have some kind of follow through so skills. New or, game plus sort of thing yeah, going on. Yeah, but like like. A rogue legacy, rogue light, because it because you have money that you can spend to get skills, and you can upgrade your air essentially. But I mean, I think I personally let's. I'm not going to argue the semantics with you because you know at the end of the day, the f- phrases evolve, don't they? You, you you know you can't just say a rogue like has to be an ASCII art game. Otherwise, nobody would use the term rogue like to describe things no, because agree. they are not popular games. Yeah, I there's, agree. There's a few out there. I've seen... They're um, niche. They're very much a niche. Very, very niche. I mean, I, I, I'm not even that into that kind of thing. I've played a few of them. I think there's one um, called... Uh, that's, that's currently in development called um, Quarries of Scred, um, which is a... I think it's a roguelike, but it's it's done by a guy on... I, I follow. I, well, I did follow until he blocked me because of something I said. He, he was in a bit of a mood that day. Um, a guy called Darkest Kale on uh, on Twitter, and he's also got another account called Lightest Kale. I think it's some kind of split oh, yeah. personality thing. But anyway, he's um, it, it looks quite cool, and I've seen some people play it as well, and it, it looks interesting, but it's that's, as far as I understand, a roguelike. Hmm. But I still, I don't I have no problem with the, the people reappropriating the term. You know, the, the, the founder of Google has reappropriated the term the dark age to describe now, to describe the dark age of technology. Because he's talking about, um, uh, I can't remember where I heard this now, but he was talking about, it might have not been the guy, in, the, the founder of Google, it might have been someone else entirely, Sergey, sorry. Sergey Brin. Um, I can't remember, it was somebody, somebody in one of these these big um, these big conglomerates um, and they were saying that we that we get we're entering a dark age and that we've got thousands of gigabytes of of archive data out there on the internet on our hard drives everywhere and a lot of it cannot be read anymore because we don't have programs that will read them because we've upgraded programs and they're not backwards compatible and it's getting to a point where we just have these ar- these archives of data that are just just going to be sat there doing nothing. It's like a legacy dark age, isn't it, I guess? Yeah, but at the same time, if you think about it, I mean, I've still got all of my software that I've ever bought down there. Yeah. Since that yeah, disc I, gets lost, I, though, I don't know what happens. We've got emulators and stuff. We've got DOSBox. We got. Uh, we still can use this stuff. I don't, I don't think that's a worry, to be honest. I don't think it is either. I think he's just trying to cause but widespread think, panic. <laughs> just to go back, just to clarify on, on the, the reappropriation of, of words, the problem I have with roguelike... Apart from the fact that it does feel to be a bit of an indie marketing term that's only now starting to go out of fashion, but it was very fashionable for a while. It kind of, you know, is the, the zombie survival game is the fashion now. Yeah. Um, that's back then. It was roguelikes to the point where there weren't even there weren't even rogue type games, and that's a problem that I've got. When people describe a game as a roguelike, I expect a certain genre. And so they're using it for the wrong reason. And, and the example I gave was that they, they call in Sonic the Hedgehog a, a ring collect them up. You know, I've got I've got problems with genres in general. And genres are just a way for us to easily describe a game to somebody. That's all it is. It means yeah. nothing because as with every single film and every single band on the planet and every single creative output, every single painter and uh, piece of art, they're all, they've all got genres, you know, but they... they they're still unique in their own little way, you know. But it's descriptive. That's the that's the main thing. But it's it, descriptive. But it it's almost as a platformer. You th- you in your head, you suddenly have a, a whole... Mario in my head immediately. Yeah, that's, Mario, yeah, Sonic, one of the originals. Like that. Well, you but know if someone mean. says rogue like now, you can't actually. You still don't know much more about the game. You know that there's a mechanic which is hardcore mode, where if you die, you lose that character. But you don't know anything about how you die or how you play the game. It doesn't give you any more information. It's it's silly. So people need to stop using roguelike to, 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 as a, a genre unless they actually mean a, a proper rogue style game. Thankfully, it probably won't happen much anymore because it's gone out of fashion. But it was a bugbear. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Next one. Uh, so Starbound, we had a. Uh, why have I put Starbound I down? I didn't play I don't know, Starbound. I didn't play, neither did I. 
Oh, bollocks to that. I didn't. I think I might have had a quick go and showed you guys, but I don't know why it's on yes, there. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You, you did play it. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, you, you map, you, 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 your world had broken or something. We've talked about that way too much as it stands, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and welcome to Dreadhead5518, who has uh, immediately joined the channel and trolled us, but thank you. Welcome, yep, one and all. Much. He can uh, He can join in the conversation if you want, or you can continue to troll, and we don't care. Um, yep. Worms Armageddon, we struggled <laughs> like fuck to get it working and didn't get it working eventually um uh, thank you to uh, potato one of our followers who one of our regulars uh, who, who gifted it to me so i didn't have to spend my precious five pounds or whatever it was on uh, on kingwin and um i did i, I paid yeah five but pounds you, for a game that doesn't work both you and steve but we couldn't just couldn't get it working and every time i alt tabbed out of the game which i had to do quite a lot for um uh, for uh, for streaming reasons uh, it, it it just broke my computer. Everything GDI just blew up, and my entire every entire computer just exploded. So yeah, we couldn't play that. But thanks, Woot, and I will hopefully play that at some point. Um, and the last game that I'm going to mention, but Lou may have a few more he wants to talk about. I think there are a few more that you and Steve play that I didn't. In fact, there's one that's on, on the top of my head. Um, was Mutant Gangland, which I've mentioned before, which is one of my fellow game uh, indie devs' uh, uh, current projects. Um, he is. It's a, it's a turn-based RTS, which I think Lou put... Uh, <laughs> it's a turn-based strategy game, not sorry. a turn-based RTS. What an idiot. It's a turn-based strategy game, and um, I, I think I called it an RTS before, and he had a proper go at me, because uh, it's not an RTS at all. Oh. But um, yeah, Mutant Gangland, in my eyes, that we played an early beta, it's actually come on quite a bit further now, and I think you can buy it as well. I'll um, put a link in the chat. Um, but I, I really enjoy it. It's one of them games that's quite addictive. The AI is getting better and better and better. It's, I said it's early beta, so he's, he's still got quite a lot of stuff to do. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, it's you're just basically two teams of robots and you, you fight each other and you take over certain parts of the map. One of the main things is, is you have to take over buildings and take over spawn points. And when you take those over, um, the, the intention is is to block your opponent from getting to them and that's the thing that Lou took I played a game with Lou and Lou took a bit to kind of get your head into that didn't you and you figure out which robots you could use to take over the particular yeah. spawn points because they're, they're all restricted that took me a while to figure out as well when I played it the first couple of times but yeah you get I, I, I like it I really like the game but you compared it to Advance Wars didn't you no, I, I I wanted to compare it to Advance Wars. I, okay. When I was trying to figure out what sort of a game it was, the, what sprung to mind was Advance Wars. Um, anyone who's a, a turn-based strategy fan will know about Advance Wars or about the older games like Warsong, Langrisser, which are kind of the prototypes for that, that genre. But it wasn't. It didn't have the same balance. And one of the things that is, um, is really good about Advance Wars and that style of game is that you've got this kind of rock, paper, scissor thing going on. Certain units will beat other units and certain units will beat those units. And there's like a triangle of which you pick and which you use. Mm. And it adds a lot to the strategy. Whereas it seems the, the version we were playing in Mutant Gangland was very low on that kind of tipping the balance ability. It was basically as you took over more of the map, you got more money. You could buy. You just kept buying the biggest robot and battering people. I didn't even need to buy robots by the end of the game at all. I just, no. I just kept buying them because I had loads of surplus. <laughs> Somebody say my feet smell like sour grapes. My my feet do sound smell like sour grapes. Um, I think Mine you just smell wanted like to, very good olives. I think you just wanted to know if we were live or not, and we are live. Um, welcome Bart two two seven eight. Thank you for for watching for however long you're here. Um, so yes, we just finished out. Unless again, Lou has another game or any other games that what he wants to talk about. What was the game that you were thinking about? Because um, uh, I can't remember. Medieval engineer. Else. Medieval oh, right, engineer. Me yeah, yeah, yeah. That looked all right. Actually, that's by the same people who did Space Engineers, but it's medieval castles and stuff like that. Very good looking game, actually. Yeah. It's not procedurally generated, but it looks like it could be procedurally generated. But in terms of the, the expanses and the mountain ranges and stuff like that, it's certainly a lot more interesting looking world than Minecraft, for instance. I'll go out on a limb there and say that. And it's also got really nice physics in it. You can like throw throw massive balls at uh, um, castles and knock them down. Yeah, sorry, um, sorry about the uh, the slight things. I'm just looking at my camera settings. If something went wrong with my camera, then everything's okay. gone a bit funny. Yeah, but it, it looks like it's one that's probably worth watching. Whether yeah. they'll add to it in a way which makes it worth playing, like it, long term, 
it, who knows it looks um it looks good to me I, I, look, I like the look of it i didn't want to quite get it yet i'm i've, I've kind of got a little bit fed up of early access stuff uh, i said it right um I've, you've got a sticker on your monitor i actually looked at it after i said it then and, and i read pre-alpha thanks to you guys yeah they've decided <laughs> to they decided to troll me this weekend when we were having the land party sure, sure and, uh, on the camera yeah so i i've got a i've got a little post-it which is backwards <laughs> anyway, it's not, it's not backwards. It's fine. No, it's backwards. It's backwards to the stream. Oh, um, but anyway, it, I, I wrote early access on it because I could never remember how to say what what early access was. I thought I was saying pre-alpha and all kinds of stuff. So they decided to scribble it out and, and write pre-alpha. Um, so yes, uh, I'm just going to switch my camera around. So oh, there we go. Now it's all forwards. Yeah, read my t-shirt. Um, so that was the only other game that I think we you guys played that I didn't really. Oh, well, I didn't play that. I watched you playing it, but it did look interesting. Um, yeah. Worth watching. It certainly looks more interesting than Space Engineers, put it that way. And plus, you were sat there going, Oh, can you try this for us? Can you try this? You're trying to get someone else to play the game like you would. Does, it, does, well, it, yeah, does the physics work exactly right? Uh, is, is it realistic? This is the thing. I think we've all been waiting for this. When you, play, um, when you play Minecraft or something like that, one of the first things I do is I'll try and knock the bottom out of a tree and see what happens to the tree. Now, in pretty much every game ever made, since the beginning of time if you knock the bottom out of the tree two one of two things happens the tree remains floating in the air or the entire tree disappears and this medieval engineers you knock the bottom out from something and it falls down and breaks into bits mostly most of the time I, I mean, about time <laughs> how long have we been waiting for that to happen in games how long have i been waiting personally for that to happen in games a long bloody time I used to do it in um, Red Faction. I'd like yeah. knock the bottom out of a wall, and the wall would still be floating. I was just get disappointed. No, but like, Re have you played Red Faction Armageddon? The I third, the no. third person. I've only played that, the original. That actually has some really good physics, um, destroyable physics in it, and the game's not too bad. It gets a bit repetitive. It's a third person type thing, but you can buy set satchel charges at strategic points around big buildings, set them all off. You'd like it, I think. Actually, you should probably get get it. I think you could probably get it on PC now. Um, set them off, and then. There you go. It's all. Uh... They've always been a bit of a gimmicky game. The Red Faction series for me. It's like the only thing they've got over other games is destructible geometry. It's a very specific kind of destructible. It's like the in Wolfenstein. I don't think if you played the, the new Wolfenstein, you haven't had have your new order. Yeah, I haven't played. Oh, yeah, I haven't completed have. it yet, but I've played quite yeah. a lot of it. There's um the the the, uh, the cra laser craft work, which cuts holes in walls, but only very specific walls. It's like. You know why did he even bother doing that? I, some people seem to like that, but I thought that was just a silly addition. Yeah, I I liked it. I, I said to you, I liked mm -hmm. it. In fact, when uh, when it yeah. first came out, it didn't add anything to the game for me. Um, right, so let's move on to our next section. We still haven't got audio for it or anything else. Wave the exploding list. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd let you do it on your own this time. Thank you. Uh, have you got a Cheers. list, Lou? Have you I got haven't a list? got a list. I was trying to think of one today, but... I'm going to have to use one of my 20, aren't I, again? Oh. <laughs> oh. That I hid from you this weekend. I actually specifically copied and pasted all of my sticky notes that I have on my desktop normally, put them in a text file for the weekend, and then recreated my sticky notes when you all left, just so you didn't see my list. Right, so, um, I think we talked about this last weekend, actually. So let's go for most hated sidekick <laughs> in a game. <laughs> Now I can say, and I've forgotten a name. The um, the first, the first L Lydia, Lydia, Lydia in Skyrim. For fuck's sake, every all of the followers in Skyrim, they're just useless. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, I, I'll let I'll let you have this. So you, you're just going to encompass all of the basically the, the follow AI in in Skyrim, not in every am, game but, ever. I am, but it's specifically directed at Lydia because she's the first one who you get who does that, and it's just awful. It's like. It's like leading around someone who's been lobotomized. Um, okay, well, I'm going to use, I'm going to say Zeke, 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 I think it is, from the infamous games. And the reason, I, it. the reason I say that is because he, he's a bit of a twat anyway. He's, I, I don't think he's your brother. I can't remember what he is, but he's, he's 
friends with or brother of the the protagonist um, Cole McGrath. Um, Cole McGrath is a uh, the superhero with all the superpowers, but Zeki is this this just this wanker who has absolutely no <laughs> skills whatsoever, and he. he Double crosses you so many times in the game. He, he's he's just the most rubbish sidekick on the planet I've I've ever come across. So he's my he's my top. He's he's my. Is it, are we one. saying supporting characters here, not just sidekicks? No, he's he's the side. He's your sidekick in the game. Yeah, basically. but I mean, is is, is is this list includes supporting characters, or do they have to be characters which you actually play with? Um, How specific would it be in here? I'm ones that you can't play. But but who actually are involved in the gameplay? Still? Who who do something with you at some point in the game? So let's talk. Like for example, who actually would would I include people like Ares from? I'm, I'm not going to include her because yeah. she's a good sidekick. But because she you can almost play as her, can't you? You can't. But you play can as play her. as her you, you in the battles. Only only in the battles. Yeah, she is kind of a sub supporting character though. I mean, the main character is obviously Cloud. So yeah, I think it's more characters who are kind of part of the story and maybe you'll have to escort around or something like that but it's like <gasps> what about she, oh no nah, she's not a sidekick what about emma from metal gear solid 2 you know the one where i had to drag her through the the get take her through the water and she I'd was her that, legs were that broken counts. yeah yeah but that's that's actually probably a whole genre of characters well not a genre but a whole kind of category of just badly controlled ai yeah, there's a lot Friendly. of that though, isn't there, in the games world? You you can't really. I'd, I'd lump them all in together. Just stop it. Stop giving us follow AI until it's perfect. It's and that's never going to work. Well, again, I'm, I'm sure Sam could come up with some some better examples here because he's played a lot of games with follow AI in specifically. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm struggling for someone else. After well, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to say Tales from the Sonic series. Good one. Good one. Because we just, you know, if anyone has played them for any length of time, you'll realise that basically the Sonic series is you running through maps with Tails dying at the side of the map every five minutes. And then occasionally... And you're just dragging him past spikes and off into water and things like that. He's just constantly dying around you. That's all he does. Yeah. No, I'm with you there. I, I, I like that one. I like that. Um, God, it's hard when we do this, isn't it? It's hard to uh, to think of ones off the cuff, but... That's half the challenge. Usually, we've got four people to uh, to help us fill in the space while while we think. I'm trying to think of characters from first person shooters. Uh... Oh God, um... no, no. I'm sure there are some. Uh, they're normally annoying. They're normally whiny, annoying characters in Japanese games. I tend to find they like they have the the stereotypes, and you've got the kind of gruff, slightly quiet. Um, you know the, the main character, and then you've got the idiot sort of sidekick. Well, can we use? And that's a trope, isn't it? Can we use Cat Kate Sith, Cat Sith, whatever his name is? I'd like to use Kate Sith, yeah, Cat Sith, whatever. I, I think he's an annoying character. I also think Reeve, who's the kind of you find out as the person controlling him, is also a bit of a dick. I like Reeve. I like all he's, of them. No, as bad as Kate Sith, but well, he's yeah, he's the still Shinra a bit of a douche. The sh yeah, well, the the um the the Turks. They're not really sidekicks, though, are they? I mean, they're, they're supporting not, they're characters. Support they're not. characters. So yeah. Sidekicks are people that specifically help you. I mean, what about the Batman games? The Batman. Hey, someone mentioned someone mentioned it last week, but um, your brother in GTA Four. Uh, oh uh, God, Rom Roman. Roman. Hey, <laughs> hey, you want to go bowling? I can't yes. even do the accent. Fuck off! No, I don't. <laughs> no. That GTA Three was really um, four, four, four. Yeah, four. GTA Four was really bad with that phone. The it's like they introduced a phone into a computer game for the first time, and it went off every ten fucking seconds. Did the the phone, phone that that's my top. That's the top. The phone in GTA Four in general. <laughs> didn't didn't you have one in uh, San Andreas as well? Oh, I, uh, I don't I didn't think, think so. Right. I thought there was some way that you, your homies could get in touch with you, but clearly not. I can't remember. You might have got texts and that, but it wasn't. I think it was part of the story rather than you know random events that occurred, like uh, and girlfriends and all the other rubbish you had to do in GTA Four. Mm. I'm glad you could turn it off in GTA Five if you wanted to. They toned it down quite a bit in GTA Five. Didn't it was, they? It was, it was quite uh, balanced, I think. There. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> what about um, what about G? How much of GTA uh, San Andreas did you play? Um, 
about an hour or two. Oh, I got right. I got up to the bit where you know where you're doing the first gangland mission where you've got to protect your turf or whatever it OJ is. OJ Lok. Did you did you meet OJ Lok? I, I met I met I met OG, isn't it? OG Lok. OG Lok, sorry. Original gangster, yeah. Yeah, I remember him. Sorry. I'm so white, aren't I? I'm sorry. OJ <laughs> Orange OJ <juice. and> Lok. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, he was he was a particularly annoying, but he was also quite comical as well. I quite liked him. I think he was meant to be annoying. Claptrap from the Borderlands series. What's wrong with him? He's awesome. He's meant, he's meant to be a dick, though, isn't he? He's but meant he's, to I be annoying. I love the fact that he's a dick. I love that character. I would never say I hate him. I can't put him in the I can't put him in the hate category because he, he entertains me every time he's next to me. This guy, I don't know. Yeah, I, I actually do find him annoying, but I also find characters that are meant to be annoying not in that. Like, I, I love, um, I, I love what's his name, Mister Torg. Mister Torg is brilliant. Oh, you know, I keep I keep thinking of things from um, series and and films. Uh, I want to throw two in there. Zoidberg from Bloody Futurama does my head in. I know it's not a game, but <laughs> he, he annoys me. <laughs> and, and Pretz from. Uh, um, who is who is possibly the worst sidekick in any film ever from um, Hercules in New York uh, at the Arnie film? The first He's Arnie film. Awful. That. He's awful person. <laughs> right. Let's let's move on because I think we're struggling with this one, aren't we? Again, this uh, this so, list yeah. thing. So yes, this is where moving on to gaming news now. Things that we've uh, rumors, things we've picked up this week that have uh, been interesting to us. Uh, I think mostly it's all my stuff I've put on there. It is, yeah, but it's like there's lots of things here that I p picked up as well. So we've got the PS4 20th anniversary console. Uh, there's a bidder that pulled out of a hundred twenty-nine thousand dollar bid. Uh, I'm not sure what? where it was. I'm going to uh, paste it in, paste the links into chat as we as we talk. Um, yeah, this guy he he took a well, obviously there's quite a few people bidding on this. He's taken a hundred twenty-nine thousand. Uh, dollar bid I think it was anonymous as well possibly sounds like it might have been on eBay and um, he's pulled out of it last minute but I think what they're doing is that what they were going to do is what, whatever the console raised they were going to donate the same amount to uh, a charity let me just have a look at what the charity was yeah the charity was um, uh, Save the Children Japan Oh, save the children so yeah and they're still going to do that so i think that's quite nice for sony sony you've got the money to be fair you can't really <laughs> can't really say you know thumbs up to them or anything but yeah i think uh, i think it's good that they've still done that um so it's basically a playstation 4 that was l looked like a playstation 1 uh, i had the I, same color scheme didn't it yeah and the old logo yeah i think it looked uh, looked quite cool it did, does look cool actually i like the look of that i've also just noticed that um if up close it's got like a the uh, the circle square triangle and two etched into it yeah 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 that's very um, nice next bit of news that, that popped up uh, that, that was fairly interesting to me as an indie dev anyway is uh, the pa paranautical activity a game that was pulled from steam because the because <laughs> he threatened Gabe Newell because <laughs> he threatened the, the owner of steam um or the owner of steam you know what I mean the the, the lead dev of um of valve rather who owns steam uh he's the basically the guy left his indie studio in a, a few months later he rejoined his indie studio and now they've sold their ip to some to another company digirati uh digirati yes i yeah. played the game i've got it actually I, I again got it somewhere i can't remember where now but not it's on like it. a it looks looks fun to me. It looks like Smash TV with pixel art in 3D. Well, it is. But yeah, I love, you, you I love went... the fact that it's actually the Atonement edition that's come out as well. That's brilliant. Yeah, but I mean, it's back on Steam because it's with a new developer, basically. So yeah, you know, Code Avarice, the original the original developer. Uh, I think they're still probably banned from Steam for life. I would imagine. Can I read out the quote here because this is brilliant? Go on. <laughs> So, back in October, an, an embarrassing flurry of emotional decisions led the Code Avarice developer Mike Hol Molbeck to claim that Steam is the most incompetent piece of fucking shit. He made this remark along with a string of others moments after this game was published on Steam. Fucking Steam is just fucking taking money out of my pocket, misinforming people that my game is in fucking early access, he complains. And <laughs> I'm going to kill Gabe Newell, he's going to die. <laughs> We can we can laugh at it now, only because we know that. I mean, I can't get that angry. You know, as an indie dev, I would never bury myself like that, regardless of what the, the you know the the one PC distribution platform that's worth pretty much anything these days. Have, have you seen I, indie game the movie? Yes, yes. 
I've yes, and I've seen <laughs> I've seen Phil Fish's um, numerous. Not just Phil Twitter Fish, reaction. Phil- I mean, Jonathan Blow wasn't as wasn't particularly. It wasn't his proudest moment either, was it? No. Um, yeah, I've 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 seen f- the film, and, and to be fair, what the the guy who um, the the developer, the coder from uh, the Super Meat Boy crew, he he was he wasn't particularly gracious, gracious either, was no, he? No, he was. Um, I as an indie, I really don't have that in me. I don't. I, I care about my game. Don't get me wrong. I just don't. I don't feel like I should attack people or, you know, defend defend it too much. It feels like a bit of a modern, well, I say a modern age thing, but we've, we've been in gaming long enough now to know that there, there's a lot of angry young people playing games. Yes, there's something weird going on with your connection, I think. It's not my connection, it's the uh, it's my camera, it keeps resetting itself. It's this, honestly, I might even send it back, it's do, it does my head in this camera. It's a nice send quality. Send them but... back. Um, um, but yeah, I, th- I think there's there's always been that the angry young gamer thing. I don't think and he's I that guess... young, though. I think that's a problem. It's just the people who are passionate, people who put in so much effort and time into the games, that again feel like they're getting picked on and they feel entitled to an extent. Hmm. Why's your camera gone all jaunty? Jaunty? It's not yeah. as me. It's not jaunty. Uh, it looks like you're at an angle. I don't know if that happened just now or I don't matter. Um, one of the game that I I have talked about a number of times is Frozen Cortex that got released on the nineteenth of February, which I think was last last Thursday, a day after our show. Um, yeah. It looks brilliant. It's been getting awesome reviews. It's got it's got fantastic uh, fantastic coverage. It's a turn based stra- uh, like future sport strategy game. That's the only way I can really describe it. I will Let's face it, it's basically the, the developers made um, Frozen Synapse yeah. many years ago and it didn't take off. It should have took off, but for whatever reason, it just didn't. Um, they and got... this seems to be them them basically recycling the idea, giving it a better marketing budget and getting it p- pushed around. They've, but they, it's they, essentially they, the same idea, isn't it? Frozen, si- price, Frozen Synapse was considered an indie hit. But it's a cult sort of hit. It wasn't a mainstream well, hit. Whereas it's like it's heading towards mainstream. The thing, no, 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 definitely not. If you look at this game, it's still got the complexity, and especially the complexity in the AI. Um, it's quite a an elaborate. I don't mean it's yeah. I don't mean it's not complex. I just mean that it's actually going to get in front of a majority audience, unlike Frozen Synapse, which was a niche audience. Again, this may have something to do with the graphic graphics fidelity though because they've put a lot more effort into the the graphical and animation side of things this time around uh previously they built the engine they've you know i think it's all c plus plus programming i think it's all uh, uh quite you know custom it's not it's not using unity or anything like that um and they, they they've built the engine they've got the ai to a, a good state where they, they understand it and then they've read you know redeveloped it and started putting the shine on things and that as you said that will draw people in um, it's a shame that that's the way things go because I mean, Frozen Synapse to me is is quite a good game. It's just very it's difficult for me. Game. It's very mm. difficult for me to get my head round. <laughs> uh, I don't fully understand the AI and everything, you know. Um, but yeah, I uh, I thought I'd pimp that because I think I put a, a YouTube link in in the chat. So get on that if you're into your strategy games. Anybody? All right. Onto onto one of the. I think people have forgotten about this game already. I have to be honest with you. Um, it got launched last week. Uh, the order eighteen eighty six. We had a bit of a talk about it. Uh, it got launched last week, and and it's it's got sixty seven percent on Metacritic. Last time I looked, let me just have a look see if it's actually the same now. It may have gone up a bit or gone down a bit. Sixty six percent. It's gone down slightly. Gone down. Average user score of six point eight. Obviously, there's there's positive and negative reviews with it all, but on top of that as well, we've got a, a GameSpot five out of ten boring um, thing, and we've we've got a lot of people saying it is basically a film. Now, my argument with this, and I talked about this last week, is that if I want to watch a film, I'll go and watch a film. If I want to watch a CGI film, I'll go and watch a CGI film. If I want to play a game. I want the gameplay to be interesting, and I want the. I haven't played it, so I don't. I can't really comment on it. But from everybody else, well, sorry, I can comment on it because I'm a human. Of course, I can. Um, 
But I want the gameplay to be a game, you know? I want it to be interesting. I want it to challenge me. I want... I don't want to have to... Th apparently, wh while you're playing the game as well, there's a lot of button bashing and a lot of um, quick time events. Sorry. So shoe shoehorning gameplay into I'm, cutscene, basically. Yeah, I'm sorry, but fuck off. Just, yeah, just don't, don't give me that shit. I don't want that. As a gamer, I don't want to be paying 60 quid for that. I want to be paying... I want to be paying... Playing... Um, 10 quid for that, you know, or, or whatever it is for a DVD or Blu-ray these days, you know? I don't want to be... a Netflix license. Or oh, whatever, yeah. I want yeah. I want that to be delivered to me. It's just... Re they've, they've put so much effort into this game when there's not much gameplay. Why make it a game? Why not just hire actors and, and have the same budget for a, a good, high-quality, AAA blockbuster film? Do you get yeah. me? Am I, am I coming off? No I, I, no, I totally get you. I mean, I, I, I think it looks beautiful. I think oh, yeah. as, as a piece of art, I think the game looks absolutely beautiful. And I was... I'm still kind of excited to see it, but I, I, I think now I'd just like to watch someone play it. I don't know, think it's meant to be five that. hours long and two hours, two and a half hours of that is cutscene. Uh, how true that is, I don't know. I've heard that bandied around a lot and it kind of sounds... It smells a bit like bullshit to me that... I, it would be that short. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it is that short. I think you can do more in it than that. But if I'm if I'm being presented with, I mean, at least in Metal Gear Solid, the bits that are gameplay are gameplay. You know, I'm not. I, I, you know, we're talking about games with cutscenes that are, are really long. I'm not. Mm. I am exposed to a lot of cutscenes, maybe even more cutscenes than actual gameplay. But I've still got a good ten hour game in it. You know, if not longer than that, and I've still got on top of that, I've still got interesting gunplay and interesting stealth mechanics and interesting stuff to do in the game. To me, anyway, in that game, it's the only thing I can compare it to because you know Metal Gear kind of started the trend with cinematic gameplay. But there's no quick time events apart from the R1, you know, prompt that you get occasionally. In yeah, Metal they're Gear kind Solid of 3. they're kind of quick time events. Yeah, aren't but you they? don't. Be, yeah. They're not though. They don't. It doesn't stop and start the game. You know. Um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not into it. Mm. Not into that at all. Right, um, next one. Epic Games, um, which is the Unreal, uh, is it Unreal Dev? It is Unreal, isn't it, De Dev? Um, Unreal, Gears of War, you know, those, those kind of people. They, um, they've offered an incentive for developers to use the UE4 engine. Yeah, they've done this stuff before. They've done like make 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 something unreal contest before. Um, so they do seem to be very much behind the developers. I think this this fits in with the the way that uh, they, they've done the new unreal tournament. They seem to be very much be behind the community. So basically, they're offering uh, up to five million, not for an individual dev. I think it's grants between 5,000 and 50,000 and are no strings attached funding from the engine provider. So we're getting, um, we, I said, basically they, they will allow you to, I haven't, I haven't read the full article for a week. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to engage at the same time as, uh, as read it. Um, so it's basically they want you to make something with Unreal Engine 4 and they're willing to give you a grant if you can obviously fill out the application form and they feel like you're going to do good with the, the money. Yeah, I mean, uh, it said it says no, no, it's, they say it's no strings attached, so it's going to be, you know, they're not going to be giving you that much. I mean, $5,000 isn't a lot really, neither is 50000 mm. when it comes to game development. I mean, that wouldn't even fund one developer for a year, you know, let alone mm. all the artists and everything else you need for a a good looking triple A game or anything like that. So it's an indie it's an indie incentive for small two D games or small three D games rather. The important distinction of this from uh, Make Something Unreal is that they're saying here that it's ostensibly not a competition that basically they want people of people all people to kind of have a go at this and there's no there's no winner or loser, it's basically just grants. I th I think they're going about this the right way. I think the the Unreal engine I, the, the, what they're trying to do is trying to get their engine to be more well used. See, they're they're yeah. after license money, aren't they? Well, they, the they also they also introduced the eighteen or nineteen dollar a month subscription model um, when Unity has you know Unity has become more and more and more popular, and UE4 has been 
popular for a while, but it's never really been that accessible because it's been too expensive for small developers to pick up. But now they've offered mm. a, a for UE4, they've, uh, they've offered a much cheaper incentive for for indie devs to get on board with it and a lot of indie devs are taking them up on that as well even though again a lot of people i speak to are saying unreal engine's got x problems you know unity's got x problems it is a six and two threes but now ue4 is a lot cheaper than unity unity's something like 75 dollars a month whereas mm. unreal is 19 you know or it might even have went yeah. down I'm, I'm not sure um I happen to have already invested in Unity a lot of time and, and learning, so that's why I'm staying with that. But I may take a look at uh, UE4 in the future because mm. uh, they do seem to be on the side of the indie dev these days. Certainly, they do on the side of the community. Yes, yes. Um, I think it's. I, I think even CryEngine have got some kind of subscription deal now, but I think it's unlikely people are going to pick up Cry. I've heard a lot of bad things about that working with it. How how difficult it is. To, yeah. to work with um so yes next to uh, next thing we've got uh day one dlc for battlefield hardline that's that doesn't even you know it doesn't even surprise me they did that with battlefield 3 and battlefield 4 i uh i've, I've ranted about dlc a number of times and I, i've got i've got to a point now where i'm it's it's annoying but it, it'll only keep happening as people you know, people keep buying these games and pre-ordering these games and and letting the developers do this to us. Day one DLC, even even if it's not as shit as this stuff. What is? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm just trying to rem remind myself of what this is, but it's not very good from what from what I remember. Oh yeah, 200% team player boost and a 200% objective boost, um, and they'll last for 30 minutes when you activate. That's, but that's free, I think. That's free um, DLC. But there's also other deal, other day one DLC. Hang on. They did do something similar with um, Battlefield Three. I'm sure of it. And Battlefield Four, like some, they, I think that's a kind of a standard thing that they're doing gaming now. Is that they give people who pre-ordered or people who bought a more expensive version of the game some little boost? Are these games? I mean, are these the people that are? going for this though are they are they gamers or are they just battlefield fans you know is, is both the, really I, I know I, a, I knew a lot of gamers who bought the limited pack or the premium premium battlefield 3 premium i bought it when it was you know really late on in the game i, th I thought hey everyone else has got it i'm playing battlefield 3 quite a lot at the moment so you know why not i haven't bought another game for a while i think did, it was 20 quid people, or something well no this when it first came out you paid 40 quid for the game and then 40 quid for the premium on top so it was yep. 80 quid for a game <laughs> Which is atrocious, isn't it? When you think about mm. it, when it should really all, you know, I, I can't, I, I just can't justify paying that amount of money for a game these days. I, I have done, you know, I've paid a lot of money for casual games, but it, I've learned my lesson from that. And and yeah. but it doesn't seem that the gaming public is learning any lesson from this. And especially considering they keep complaining about things that happen in games and things that are coming out you know with new dlc someone will pay 10 quid for a bit of dlc that's prop arguably worth you know a couple of quid at the most or they'll be paying a lot more than that for some at least the battlefield premium stuff you get quite a lot for that and you get up, up all the updates and all the packs that are coming out that's okay i don't mind that kind of subscription based you know you but you you, you get one product and then you get loads of updates in the future that's okay to an extent mm. It's just an easier way of them selling it to us though if you think about it still right so there we go we are live again hi sorry about that um now we're getting told we've got a few drop frames so if anyone has a problem with the uh, stream please let us know i don't know why or what's going on it could be twitch probably is twitch usually is twitch <clears throat> uh what were we talking about we were talking about oh, hardline dlc, DLC but let's move yes. on from dlc because i can witter on about that all bloody night Okay. GTA 5 PC. Yes. Pushed back. Bastards. Why? I am so, so annoyed at this. I know everyone else is annoyed at this. Um, and it's been big news. It's been trending on Facebook and stuff. I just want to play the first person shooter, but I'm willing to give them money. I'm willing to buy this game again. Have you pre ordered? Price. No, I haven't. Good, good. Glad you haven't pre-ordered. Don't pre-order. Stop pre-ordering everyone. Pre no, I'm not going to pre-order. <clears throat> I'm going to get it on a Kingwin because it'll be about 
five or ten quid less. GTA Five has been pushed back till April on the PC, um, but the console heists have now got a release date of tenth of March, which console gamers will be happy about. I'm quite looking forward to the heists in general, but we'll get the heists. And also, they're saying that the PC version is going to be the best version of all of it. All of the consoles and everything, which we would expect anyway as PC gamers. Although not these days, usually. We usually get really crappy ports of console games, don't we? Um, however, I don't mind. I've got so many games. Look at your Steam list. How many games have you got in there that you haven't played? Yeah, quite a few. So shut up. Play some of them instead then. Right, I know I know you want to play this game, but stop stop it. Because at the end of the day we're gonna get a better hopefully get a better quality product by the end of it. We are, we are, yeah, but I just think I think it's what you said the other the other week, that the company this big should know better. They should have this shit sorted so that they can actually just do this stuff. Oh dear, Methylos has been ganked by Nightbot. <laughs> did he get did he get banned? Sorry, Methylor. No, he did, he did. He's been given a warning. Just been given a warning. Okay, well, don't don't use caps too often. No, he doesn't like that. Um, <laughs> Only we're allowed to shout in this channel. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Oh, Twitch, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? Not just Twitch, sorry. My video is just going blurry and crappy every five seconds now. Right, okay, I'm just going to ignore. Race. I'm going to ignore all this. Um, yes, PC Master Race, but it is a bit a bit tired and boring that by now, isn't it? Everyone's complaining about PC Master Race people, even though we're joking about it, most of us. Um, but yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind waiting, and I'm happy to. And to be honest, you know, I don't mind waiting. When it comes out, I'm thoroughly looking forward to playing with uh, you know with you guys, and probably won't bother. I'm not, with that's online. not what I'm looking forward to. I've said before, I'm looking forward to playing playing it in a first person perspective. I, I just want. If it if it's even a half decent first person shooter, then I'll be very happy just to be able to walk around that beautifully detailed world that they've created. I think that'd be so much fun. I, yeah, I, I mean, when I, I when I played the Grand Theft Auto games, I spent probably three times as long at the end game than I did in the game itself. So when it came to like you finish the last mission and you're just in sandbox mode, you can do what the hell you like. I spent so much time just dicking about in that. And to be able to do that in first person just seems like I bought give, a few properties and then I stopped playing it. I haven't, I didn't do anything after that, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed the game itself and the. I enjoyed the trading part of it as well for some reason. I enjoyed trying to make money, but I didn't realise how to do that until quite late in the game, and I, I didn't really get how to how to manipulate the system into getting making loads of money. So I didn't have that much by the time I finished, but the big payout at the end. I then went off and bought whatever I could, but I still couldn't buy all the properties. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I'm a completionist, and I didn't particularly want to run around and look at the world. I wanted to run around and find the the unique um, vehicles and you know play around with them. And th again, this is why I prefer GTA San Andreas to all the rest of them because there's a lot of cool little vehicles and jetpacks and you know things that you can do in the in the game that I quite enjoyed. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. not I'm not bothered. You're bothered. Let's move on. <laughs> Okay. Did we did we paste the link for that in into? No, we didn't. I'll, uh, I'll, put no. the, I'll put the link in. There we go. There you go, everybody. I'm sure they get get a, easy access to that. Yes, I'm sure. But I like to I like to list everything in here. Okay. <clears throat> Happened a few days ago. This, so we got a notification of this a few days ago. Um, Telltale Games, the people responsible for um the walking... everything at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, um, story games. Minecraft is Ma coming. Yeah, Minecraft is coming up. Um, they, I mean, they used to be an indie developer, but now they've got two hundred and fifty odd people working for them, and they've got and they've now uh, the announcement this week is that Lionsgate Studios, the the film publisher, have now invested in them. Um, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with this. It's you know, it's kind of it's interesting news. I suppose it's a studio building up. The repetition. They've got a very good reputation for yep. repetition. Repertoire. Repertoire. <laughs> um, they've got a very good reputation for being at tell stories, telltale. <laughs> I imagine that's probably yeah, what's I, I in there. Yeah, I don't see a problem with this actually. I, I certainly think I certainly prefer Telltale to Square Enix in terms of the storyteller publishers. But the, the the one thing I do not necessarily have an issue with, but one of the things that slightly concerns me is that Lionsgate Studios are known for Twilight and the Hunger Games and everything I hate about the human race. 
So uh, that, they that... are very, very lady-like movies, aren't they? They are yeah. designed for girls. I watched the Hunger well, Games. Not necessarily. After just lots for... of, uh, I watched the Hunger Games um, after lots of kind of people going, "Oh, it's brilliant," but it's very much a girls' movie. Is it light? No, it's not light. It's just. I don't think you'd like it. I, pr- I probably it's a wouldn't. Girls movie. I have avoided it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's... I know, I know, chauvinist. That makes me sound, and but I, I do like movies with, with sensitive things and romance and stuff like that, and all the usual, bump. But it is a movie that seems to be very specifically aimed at girls. Yeah, uh, I think, even I, the I... fact, that, even though it's got Jennifer Lawrence in, who's very beautiful. It's irrelevant. It's, still it's not really, not really relevant at all. In fact, it's more about the production of the films, and if they're getting investment from Lionsgate, that means that they'll have some kind of, probably have some kind of uh, say so over how they do things. And I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed everything I've seen from them. You know, I played a little bit of The Wolf Among Us, and I played the first season of The Walking Dead. I've got the second season and the DLC, the Four Hundred Days DLC. And it's on our list to play. We haven't got round to it yet, but we enjoyed it. I said I've got a few criticisms of the. You know the fact that it's not as uh, not as choice based as they like to make you believe, but I still like the story, and it's still you still invest in the characters, and yeah, I like the art style and that kind of thing. And I'm hoping they don't take away from that. But I haven't seen any of the most recent stuff, like the Game of Thrones stuff, um, and so it's something else they've done as well recently. But I mean, they're a very fairly big studio. You know, they've got quite a lot of people there, so. I don't know. Mm. We'll see. I haven't we'll... played any of the games, I must admit, but uh, they do seem to be doing well with their tie-ins. Yeah. Um, I, did you hear about the NVIDIA lawsuit for the um, the, false, the false advertising for the NVIDIA N- uh, 970? I've got a 970 in my machine, so I'm quite Ooh. interested in this, but I've not so, seen this. Here we go. Uh, one of the main things is that they're, they, they've got I think this was, oh, when was it? Back in some, some other... This was announced a few days ago. But basically, if you run high resolutions with your 970, it'll use a lot more graphics memory. And I think, but I believe they've, they've advertised it as a 4 gig memory card. It is a 4 gig memory card. It has got 4 gig in it. But if you use anything over 3.5 gig, uh, the, the second 500 meg, the, the last 500 meg is actually allocated on a separate separate area of the graphics card that's slower memory access so people are getting lag when they run at you know 4k resolutions or higher higher than 1080p essentially and um, there's a few other things as well as a few other features on the graphics card so basically there's a um i looked at the the, the class action lawsuit that's been brought up against them recently and it's done by a, a guy who um let me find his name a guy who is is known for his uh, what's it called when people Vigilant, Lit- not, not vigilant. Uh, litigious nature. Yes, um, Andrew Ostrowski. Ost- Ostrowski, and he's. Um, I-, I looked him up a little bit, and he's he's known for doing this kind of thing. But you know, it's it's on behalf of everybody. It is false advertising, and I just thought I'd bring it up because I knew a few people have got nine seventies, and uh, it's interesting to know. Yeah, I think we we mentioned we mentioned a few shows back about the um the Atari Jaguar which was advertised as a sixty four bit machine because it had two two bits. I think similar sort of thing. Oh, you've you've died a little bit, sorry, uh, Lou. I can hear you but unfortunately you're uh Okay. Yeah. Okay, unfortunately, we've lost Lou, and uh, my Skype's decided to to die a little bit. I tell you what we'll do. I shall close the show down. We only had a few more things to talk about. Uh, one, we'll talk about them next week. Um, yes, so, sorry. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in anything we do, we stream every Wednesday at 7.30pm, and we... Um, we do this show at 7.30 p.m. We also try every week to stream on Mondays. Now you can't see me at all. Uh, <laughs> everything's going wrong. One second. All right, thank you, Skype. 
This is uh, highly embarrassing. Right, I, I, it's, it's really distracting. I can hear a Skype noise in the background, but I can't actually close Skype down. I think uh, I think our ISP in the UK has decided to explode for some reason, and I'm getting uh, dropped frames. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We shall see you next week, hopefully, 7.30 on Wednesdays. Um, I said we do do streams on Mondays as well. We do uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, 3. We're playing at the moment on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. GMT. Uh, GMT time, UK time and if you want to follow us, follow us at Resonance, Resonance Arcade on Twitter and forward slash Resonance Arcade on YouTube Thank you very much for watching, sorry about the technical issues, we'll see you next week <laughs>